The first episode of the Dino Dungeon devlog went way better than I could have ever hoped for. And also, some of you have sharp eyes and you spotted a few bugs that I didn't want to like point out. But yeah, it's bug fixing time. And what you will learn is that for every bug you fix, two more will appear. <laughs> Welcome to game development. In the first devlog, I was complaining about the tile map and how all these little squares cause problems, such as the character getting caught on the corner of a square. My solution was to round the character's box collider a little bit so it was smoother and just glided over these corners. I was adamant that that is not a good fix, and thankfully, Riley Shaw has pointed out that I can use a Composite Collider 2D. What is a Composite Collider 2D? Well, if you have multiple objects that have colliders and they're touching, it will turn those colliders into one collider. So how do we get tile map to do this? Well, first we're going to copy the rigid body from the tile map into a parent object, and then we're going to go back to the tile map and delete the rigid body. Our tile map collider has an option called use by composite. We're going to click that and then it, it will tell you, you better make a composite collider. So we will, we'll go back to the parent and we'll make a composite collider. And hey presto, all these square colliders become one big collider. So now we won't get stuck in corners. And this performs so much better because then we don't have to continuously calculate 100 colliders. I've done this before in 3D and I don't know why I didn't think of doing it here. So thank you Riley for that. Another comment by Jumi is, I can see that you're shaking and glitching when you're up against the wall. And he's hinting that it's a physics problem. And yes, it is a physics problem. So what you were seeing was that I was calculating physics in the update function. And that's sort of not the best way to do it. Physics stuff sort of belongs in fixed update. Why is that? Well, update is called once per frame, which is variable because you may have a 30 frames per second game or a 60 frames per second game, but fixed update will always be called 50 times per second. So for physics, it all becomes way more predictable and update and fixed update are not synchronized in any way. And the reason that my dinosaur is glitching up against the wall is because I'm doing it in update and physics is kind of supposed to be done in fixed update. So if we turn update, into fixed update, we are no longer glitching against the wall, which is great. So thank you, Jumi. However, this introduces a new problem. Sometimes, God help me, you will press jump and they won't jump. Jump and kick and buttons that you just are supposed to press once and not hold down, sometimes they don't work. Why is this? It's because it's in fixed update. And what we need to do is take jump and kick and move it into an update function. So now every time I press jump, the character will jump. And I, yes, I sat there. I sat there pressing it over and over and over and making sure every time it jumped. One thing I noticed while doing this, sometimes my dinosaur will jump different heights. I've never noticed this before. And it's infuriating. Well, I was convinced that it's something to do with friction. The friction isn't swapping from high friction to no friction quick enough. That's why I thought it wasn't leaving the ground fast enough. I went through the code so much, I was getting like mad. And then I saw it. It's just there, glaring at me in the face. For some reason, I had given the dinosaur drag. And drag, by the way, isn't the same as friction. Drag is like the viscosity of the air. So what this code does is that when you let go of a movement button, it puts it in custard. You're just in custard all of a sudden, and that's why you stop. What I thought at the time was that drag was friction, and it's not. Friction happens along the floor, but drag happens anywhere. <laughs> so I fix that by saying, when you let go of movement, the X velocity is just zero. You just stop moving. Why didn't I do that in the first place? <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Look at this. You see that grey hair? Do you see it? That's what I've done to myself. So once I fix that, my dinosaur jumps the same height every time. And he jumps every time. I press jump. So yes, another bug squished. I am on a podcast called the Super Salty Podcast. There is one episode <laughs> where I am criticizing the game control. But the most immersion breaking thing was like, if you run towards the wall, she runs on the spot at the wall. You make them stop when you get to the wall. That doesn't seem like a hard thing to, pro to, to program. It's not. I when, do char it. when character model and, and wall coordinates equal each other, then animation fucking stop. Like, I don't know. It didn't seem... 
<laughs> in the game, when you're at a wall and you walk against the wall, your character plays the walking animation even though you are stopped. So the first fix I attempted was to read off the rigid body velocity and if its velocity is really small in the x direction, like less than 0.1, then I'm not moving. However, that didn't work. What you're reading is a velocity applied to the character before the physics has decided whether or not it's going to stop or not. So what I did was I came up with a way to measure the displacement of the character. So where was I last frame? Where was I this frame? Is it significantly large? If it's not, I haven't really moved. So let's not play the walking animation. And that works quite well. And then, and then I just, I noticed that I just broke everything really. I know that it's not wrong that when I push dinosaurs around that they play a walking animation, but that's not really what I want because they do exhibit quite a bit of drag. I made it so if that dinosaur isn't active that they won't play a walking animation at all. And then I thought naively, ah, I've done it. I can switch characters. Only the dinosaur that I am playing as is animated. The rest are not animated. When I push them, they don't do some little shuffling walk. They just get pushed like they don't want to be. And I was happy until I put my dinosaur on a moving platform. And as you can see, my dinosaur is actually being displaced by the moving platform. So the walking animation is playing. Uh... <laughs> The fix for this was to not only check displacement, but also consider if the player is actually trying to move the dinosaur. So if you're not actually trying to move the dinosaur, then there will be no walking animation. Here, the game is actually in a really good place. Um, things aren't glitching. You can jump every time. Your dinosaur jumps the same height every time. So I thought, what if I upgrade the version of Unity the game runs in. I tried to bring the game from 2018 to 2019 and well it went horribly, it went terribly, really badly and I did spend some time trying to fix it and then I thought to myself the game was running just fine in 2018 so let's just stick with 2018. If it ain't broke don't fix it. Thank you for watching my second devlog. Um, I have a Twitter, an Insta, uh, a Discord, and actually I have a Patreon that you can have a little gander about. I made the pixel art for the tears myself. They're all tea, because I drink a lot of tea. If Patreon isn't your jam, it's cool. Morally support me by coming to my Discord. We're actually holding a poll for some potential logo designs for Dino Dungeon, so please come on down and vote on the one that you like. And you know, you can always smack that bell button and become a bell end today. I'll see you in the next devlog. Bye!